uh, what are we gonna do today? Uh, so, uh, we are continuing the stream from uh, last time, uh, when we did uh, Germany, Switzerland, Austria and uh, Slovenia. Uh, today we are continuing the Central Europe, uh, Central European theme. Does this get more fast when it will go louder? Okay, maybe I can put this a little bit farther away from me. It should be a little bit better. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll put you guys a little bit up. Uh, yeah, uh, we're continuing the Central European theme with Czechia, Slovakia, Hungary, and uh, sort of the western part of Poland, roughly. Yeah. How I would define it between sort of the former G German Empire part of uh, Poland, uh, so like roughly between Krakow, uh, Poznań, and Gdańsk. So yeah, uh, that's what we're gonna focus on today. Uh, do you guys have any particular preference or on which country you would like to start with? Could start with your home country. I don't. I don't mind. That completely up to you. Yeah, sure. That's kind of what I was planning. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, do, do you guys have the uh, have the dock with the location uh, locations? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going into the first location, which is a, a typical Czech village. Um, I should also probably describe if anybody has hasn't seen the last stream uh, how this is gonna work. We basically I have a prepared list of location uh, locations in each country. They are sort of broadly representative. And we're always going to go into the location and uh, sort of talk about the uh, typical features that we see. So yeah, that's, that's that how it's going to work. Okay, so uh, we're now onto the first location, which is in Visakina. So um, does it uh, does it seem like typically Czech to you guys? Uh, do you think do you think you'd go check here? here? I might do. Yeah. Well, first, like disclaimer is I'm I'm quite bad at this part of the world. <laughs> Same. So, mate, the answer would have to be maybe slash hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I w I'd go in that general part of the world. Where yeah. Like, you, know, you know, Czechia, Slovakia. Not too sure. Yeah. To be honest, I was thinking more Slovakia here, but. Um... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll address that uh, over time. Uh, okay, so uh, this is sort of in central, uh, in, uh, in central part of the country where sort of the uh, influences more from the west and the east kind of kind of meet. So the mm -hmm. kind of feature I would love to point out here for uh, with first speed is like typical light gray color that you see on that, especially on that like uh, building in the background with those two. Uh, two white windows and a sloping roof, uh, if you can see behind the church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's actually, that's called Prizolet. Uh, it, it was like the most commonly available and the cheapest form of paint for like a really long time, from like the mid 60s, like 90s. So this is, this is like a super common shade, shade of color that you see all over uh, Czechia and Slovakia as well. So the, uh, and you see that in cities, in villages, um, doesn't matter. It's like these the, these shades of of light gray. So that's something I would mention for sure. Uh, secondly, uh, if you look to the west, you see these houses with like this uh, this strip of different color. Um, yeah, that's also a, quite a typical feature in uh, I feel like Czech villages and to, to some extent in Slovakia, but it's, I, f I feel like it's a lot more common in Czechia, where you have like this, uh, yeah, you generally when the, the house, the house tends to be generally either gray or like, or like beige or something like that. And then, then uh, like between the windows, you have this strip of like, like brown or, or red or a different shade of gray or something like that. Uh, it's would pretty... that also, oh, sorry. Would that also apply to the house on the left, the, uh... one with the kind of orangey red square and the slightly purple shade on the bottom. Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty common across the villages, of, of, I feel like. Not really, uh, not really, uh, in, you don't really see it, see it much in the cities, but definitely in the villages. Uh, also, uh, another typical feature I would like to point out is this uh, roof, uh, church roof shape. Uh, as Pesta pointed out in the chat, uh, it's like the 
full big. Uh, it's like the tower. Uh, it's like the broad uh, tower shape. Uh, that's super common on, on Czech village churches. It's like the most stereotypical depiction of a church you can you can get. It's like a tiny chapel, but it's, it's like it's basically a mini sized version of the typical Czech uh, village church. Actually, I have a better example later. This is actually not the best example because they typically tend to be like uh, yellow and white. But uh, yeah, that, that roof shape uh, definitely, definitely very typically Czech. Yeah, uh, it's also very typically it's Austria and Slovak uh, and like parts of Slovakia and Hungary and Slovenia. But yeah, in in Czech, it's almost everywhere. Yeah, I was I was gonna say it looks very similar to the onion uh, shaped church roofs we talked about in Austria. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I feel like in, in like Bavaria and like Tyrol, the church, uh, the bulb shape would be like an even, even rounder. Uh, mm. Yeah, it, uh, whereas here it kind of slopes inward and then out, uh, outward. So yeah, it does, it, it does look like an onion. Uh, it's even called like that in, in Czech, it's called uh, Cibulova Vanya. Which is like onion, yeah, on a, uh, onion roof. But anyway, it's called uh, like that in German as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like an official term in English as well. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and one other thing I wanted to talk about here is like the sh sort of the layout of the village itself. As you can see, uh, the houses are actually quite close to the road here, like basically hugging the road on all sides. Um, and they're sort of throwing it out without much like planning or, or, or much thought. You have houses sort of facing the road on their broad side, houses over there facing the road on their narrow side. And I feel like that's a pretty uh, pretty typical feature of like Czech villages and like more broadly in the Central European to Western European space. Um, because I feel like uh, structure of, of settlements is kind of like an underrated part of uh, like recognizing uh, which kind of, which sort of country or area you are in. Uh, since in, in, like in, in Southern and Western Europe and like broadly to, uh, Central Europe as well, uh, like villages and towns tend to, be, tend to be like very tightly compacted together. Um, like hugging the road pretty pretty closely and sort of being strung around, uh, but 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 pretty comp like generally very compact and sort of uh, forming a cluster of, of houses. Whereas uh, if you go to the Balkans and to the e uh, sort of to Eastern Europe, uh, you get to like linear uh, uh, types of settlements where the road is is sort of lined with houses in like pretty organized lines. Uh, you definitely, I, I think Radu definitely recognizes that sort of uh, structure from Romania, for example. Yeah. But it's, yeah, but we're but we're going to talk about it. Uh, it's it's very common in Slovakia, in Hungary, in Poland. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's definitely some, something I wanted to mention to like pay attention to sort of the structure of the settlement because it, it can tell you some hint. Like for example. Uh, if this were a uh, a village in Slovakia, like somewhere f relatively further east, uh, I don't think it would just form this kind of chaotic cluster with like houses um, this close to the road. It would like be neatly neatly packed uh, one next to another alongside this road. So yeah. Mm. Also, my notice. Uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, sort of narrow sides of the of the houses uh, uh, have have like this tall and uh, tall, tall peak with uh, not much of an overhang. That's gonna be uh, kind of important later. So, yeah. Uh, do you guys want to add something here? Uh, something else you kind of want to point out? No. For me, in terms of things to point out, um, I'm going to try and remember the thing about the painted strips for sure and the church. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the, the strips are like very common in Czechia. Like, I'm, I'm not saying you, you can't yeah. see that anywhere else. Uh, and it, yeah. we will actually look at an example of something similar, but it's like, it's like, yeah, a lot of the stuff I talk about here is like matters most when, when it's like in combination and like about about like, like the frequency especially like in the central european space i feel like 
I feel like there's there's quite a lack of like really unique features. You always kind of have to look at the just broader context and yeah. Actually, I had a really hard time picking up location this time because uh, I just couldn't find a lot of places. I just couldn't find any like particular distinguishing features. So. Mm. Yeah, especially yeah. with with you know Czechia and Slovakia being pretty much well the same country not too long ago, you'd think that a lot of the architecture would just look very similar to begin with. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh well, it's a thing like Czechia, Slovakia, and uh, in Hungary, where all part of the same integral country, like two of who well, two out of three of that, were uh, part of the same integral country within the li like last like t uh, hundred or hundred ten years. So. Distinguishing Czechia from Slovakia and Slovakia from Hungary in certain parts can be super tricky. So yeah, we are gonna move on to the next location, which is gonna be Northern Bohemian Vrekel Architecture. Um, so Czechia is my homeland. I don't, I don't really get into this sort of details a lot in these, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to wanted to uh, show off uh, a few like. Uh, traditional regional styles. Uh, so this is in uh, Leperec region, region. This is uh, Krzysztof Udoli, which, uh, which is a pretty, notoriously like pretty village. Uh, and you can see uh, these wooden houses. And the first one I would like to point out is this uh, one to the south, uh, like over the, of the creek. Um, and you can see the uh, sort of color palette with these uh, white, uh, uh, with these white and wooden stripes, uh, horse, like these horizontal stripes. Uh, you can see that on that uh, house to the to the west, even better. And it's sort of like the typical color structure uh, for sort of uh, the vernacular architecture in Bohemia. Uh, you won't you won't see this super commonly because it's like yeah, it's like old, but. Uh, it's decently common, especially in certain areas, like where my uh, grandparents have their summer house. Uh, so yeah, definitely want to point that out. I, I I don't think you commonly see this sort of these sort of white and wooden stripes anywhere else. So this is something I think would uh, come in handy. Uh, this is quite near the German border, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this actually brings about my next point. If you if you look at it, look uh, in the background over there. To the west, uh, you see that uh, white and uh, white and wooden building. Uh, you might recognize yes. the timber framing, and that that should tell you that we are really that we were in the former Sudetenland. Like this was uh, this was pretty much hundred percent German speaking before nineteen forty five. So, whenever you see uh, whenever you see this uh, timber framing style, and you are certain you are in Czechia, uh, you are almost 100% guaranteed to be somewhat near the German or, well, most, mostly the German border. So it is definitely something that can be useful for sort of uh, narrowing down where in the country you are. And sort of the same same thing actually applies in Poland, we're going to talk about it a bit later. So yeah, uh, and also even if you, if you zoom in even farther, to that yellow, white and yellow house in the back, you can again see the, the sort of colorful stripes I, I, I talk about. I'm, I'm actually oh, yeah. going to drive, yeah. drive over there. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely want to, uh, wanted to sort of introduce that. This can be helpful. And if uh, yeah, if I, if I go back to start and I turn around to the uh, house to the north, mm, you can see it's kind of like on the ground floor. It kind of has these like supports uh, that kind of hold up the upper floor. And you have you have like the classic fr uh, like lock framing in, uh, in behind that. Uh, I don't. This is called Potpierowa uh, Domain Check. It, it actually has a German name, and this was a typical uh, style of architecture and that whole like Eastern Saxony uh, and the, uh, a certain part of Poland and like this northern uh, northern bits uh, of Czechia. So. That can be something that can help you out narrow down, narrow down the region as well. Yeah, these like these like wooden wooden supports holding up the upper floor. We're gonna see that. Uh, we're gonna see one later in Poland as well. I can sort of. Yeah, I can go on the map and can show the uh, region. Uh, 
Yeah, it's like this. It's like this whole region broadly. It, it's obviously like originally German style. Uh, you can see most of it today in Saxony, but there's still some remaining in Czechia and Poland as well. So yeah, uh, do you guys have uh, any more thoughts on that or uh, something else you want to point out? I wanted to ask you about if you go back to the starting location, look towards the south. There's this uh, wayside shrine. Uh, and yes. I wanted to ask you if that's something that's common in in Czechia, because uh, I know there's a couple of those around in Austria, but I don't think I've seen those a lot in other countries before. I would say it's somewhat common. Uh, I think this used to be a part of a uh, well. I don't know what the term is in English. It's like a, uh, it's called a cross, it's called Křížová cesta in Czech, it's like a cross way, it's sort of uh, supposed to simulate the journey that Jesus took, uh, like walking up the, uh, walking up the mountain, uh, and it, it typically has like 13, I think it's, it is 13 stops, and each one tends to be, uh, each one depicts like a different uh, sort of uh, scene from the journey. And they can be like really, they can be like really intricate, like this one. It's like a high bar baroque, uh, or it can be just a simple painting, or just a cross with a simple painting. But they are pretty common, yes. Yeah, sort of, sort of like a pilgrimage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like a, yeah, it's like a pilgrimage route, sorry, uh, sort of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else, guys? Oh. No, there's there's kind of more more diversity than I appreciated with the architecture. Yeah, yeah, you can you can see those supports over there as well. Yeah, actually, I really like this style. Uh, I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's uh, nice. really nice. yeah, we are gonna move on to the typical central Bohemian village. We went a little bit over board on, on the examples here, but I don't know, I can talk about it a little bit in depth here. Uh, this is, uh, okay, so we are in Drzec, which is uh, relatively close to where I live, uh, to box myself a little bit. Um, it's like a typical, uh, typical village in like that sort of heartland area around Prague. Um, you can see it looks pretty visibly like wealthier than the first, ex first example we had, like a lot more houses are like have been renovated and stuff. Uh, and you can see here, uh, towards the north, uh, these sort of farmhouses uh, are sort of lined in, uh, lined next to each other and like connected with these uh, big uh, walled, uh, yeah, with, with these big walls with uh, sort of barn doors in them. Uh, that's that's pretty typical in a lot, in a lot of uh, Czechia, especially Bohemia. It's like central to southern Bohemia, I would say. Uh, but you can also see like that structure I, I talked about with like the houses kind of being st uh, strung around without much thought or reason really. Mm. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, but especially in southern Bohemia, you can get uh, like this really neat uh, orientation of like houses stacked next to each other with uh, connected by these uh, by these walls, and barn doors. Um, also, if you if you look to the west, uh, you can see again the the sort of grey that I talked about, the brizolet. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of thinking of uh, if there's any other typical features to point out here. Uh, do you guys see anything that's sort of like uh, you've noticed before, or that maybe puzzles you or something? Yeah. Uh... Um, I I tend to notice in Czechia they have a lot of chipped roofs. Like the roof at the front of it is like chipped. You can see that on the one to the southeast, kind of. Uh, 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 uh. Oh yeah, yeah, over there. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, definitely. Uh, that's. Uh, I feel like it's not as common as as for example in Slovenia or parts of uh, parts of Austria. Uh, one part of it, but this is really common, is uh, southwestern Bohemia, I feel like. This little chip, uh, and in the mountain areas in general. Uh, in like, in the lowlands, I feel like uh, the most common roof type is like this typical 
like fla like uh, just just this uh, simple peak that you can see to the west. Uh, and like in, in the central and southern parts, you can you have this really tiny overhang overhang as well. Uh, you definitely see the the chips a lot, but uh, I feel like it's definitely more more typical in like Slovenia as well. Okay. Also, if I move a little bit to the north, you can see uh, another sort of uh, yeah roof shape. Actually, uh, I'll try to get a little bit better view on that. Uh, there's one thing. I uh, actually have a better example in, ex uh, uh, in a further example. That's so that's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you guys have want to add anything here, or maybe ask, or, or something like that? Nothing from me. Not from me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you can, uh, yeah, yeah, just one more thing I want to add. You can also see like how the windows are kind of like all over the place. Some are white, some are some are wooden, some are black, some are some are narrow, some are some are white, and some are like subdivided, some some aren't. It's like really a mess to be honest. So uh, no real patterns out here. Yeah, so we are gonna move on to the typical Czech village church. Uh. Yeah, this is actually something I suggested to Math a while back when he was making geotypes. Um, yeah, and you can see, uh, this is a shadow cookie, which is close to, close to Prague. Um, you can see this uh, yellow and white uh, sort of color, color palettes that I was talking about. It is like a really bright, uh, bright red roof. And if you look at the, uh, at the tower, uh, you can see, first of all, the onion shape uh, roof again. And uh, below that on the tower, you can see the clock at the top. And I feel like that's the most typical sort of look that a Czech village church can have. Like this, uh, this yellow and white uh, color palette, this like baroque features uh, with the onion shade roof and the uh, clock uh, just, below, just below the roof. So, yeah. And I feel like that's kind of distinct from like Austria as well, because I feel like in Austria you don't really get that clock. Uh, that often, or uh, in terms of color, they tend to be either whitewashed or like a different color. Whereas in Czechia, this this yellow and white is like super common. It, it's somewhat uh, sometimes it's also like a red and white or like white as well. But I feel like this is like the most typical. Uh, it's like the most typical color color scheme available. Jeff, uh, how to do uh, that? Oh, sorry. Uh, I feel like you're, you're cutting, cutting out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I can't. I can't hear you properly. Uh, Jeff for helps too. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you be, but uh, yeah, we, we're focusing on the architecture here. Obviously, in a lot of these places, you, you'll get other clues as well. But we're just gonna talk about that one I select today. I'm sure he'll be back in a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say to me, so this is, for me, like, the, the, the colours here, the kind of, you know, the, that pastel yellow and the orange roof, that for me is, like, very Czech. But I think the reason I get confused in this part of the world is because, like, there are a lot of other styles within the, the countries that kind of bleed into each other. And that's why I get... Um, that's why I get, kind of get confused around here with country streaks. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely I get it. it it's, uh, the decision is like definitely the trickiest for me as well. Like when I was looking for locations, especially in... Because obviously I have a lot of experience in Czechia. Especially like between Slovakia and Hungary. Uh, I, was, I was looking at locations so I was like... I, I have no idea how to distinguish this from Slovakia or like vice versa. Yeah. Like I actually have no yeah. idea. So... We'll get, get to those locations later, and I'll try to think of something, but yeah, it can definitely be very tricky. Uh, these are yeah. things I talk about are sort of more like the general pointers that you can use, and kind of try to look for patterns and like concentration of features and stuff. Obviously, in the end, it comes out comes down to individual locations, and uh, you can get like real tricky places where none of those will pretty much be helpful. But yeah, 
I know I know that this is architecture and not meta or anything like that, but does are there any good meta tips for Czechia versus Slovakia? Uh well Just because like you say, architecturally uh, like they can, I think they I can could. Um I like based on my gen, experience. Huh? Yeah, Gen four and Gen two are only in Czechia. Okay. And then Slovakia yeah, yeah. is Gen three only. And then Slovakia has a lot of uh early spring coverage or like late winter okay. it's like early early spring i think it's like whatever yeah yeah so like march april yeah or it's blue. like summer it's like harvest season almost it's like one yeah. of those two in slovakia yeah. whereas like czechia it has like a, a lot of different like types of weather i see like okay. summer i see fall sometimes i think there's like some gen 4 early spring oh yeah 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 I I, I didn't want to divert from the architecture bit, but I guess it's relevant because because the architecture oh. is difficult in this part of the world. It, it makes oh, yeah, yeah. other things. Yeah, really yeah, it, well. yeah. Sort of. Mm, yeah, in this part of the world, architecture is definitely only a part of the puzzle. Like, definitely, it's definitely yeah. a place yeah. where you have to rely on bollards, you have to rely on poles. It's yeah, yeah it's it's disgusting. I, I know, but uh, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it's tough, but I do like learning and trying to get better. Yeah, Czechia has a lot of different like uh, weather and camera metas. Like you have winter, uh, obviously a lot, lot of winter. Which uh, you have fall, especially in the west. We have like spring, uh, sort of Gen Four spring around big cities like Prague and Brno. Uh, you have summer, sort of in yeah. between, and then as you get towards the borders and like more remote areas, you get towards towards the spring uh, or the, the the fall. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whereas as, as Radu said, uh, in, in Slovakia you have a lot of like early spring, like like the, the trees are starting to bloom. Uh, yeah, you see a lot of those, I don't know what types of trees there are, but they're like pink and they're like just blooming. Yeah, 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 uh, this, especially in the east and I feel like in like on more yeah, remote yeah. Road, roads, whereas in the south and the west it's generally more summery. Uh, cherry blossoms? It's not just cherry blossoms, it's like, it's like all trees are sort of blooming, it's like early a April, so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, do you guys have, uh, want to add anything to this location? No, not for me. Uh, uh maybe Calamity, uh, do you think, do you think this looks, uh, looks somewhat distinguishable from the sort of churches you would see in Austria? Yeah, I, I don't know if, um... If what I said before cut out, I think it did oh, yeah, yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say that the windows on that onion-shaped roof are a lot less common in Austria. Usually in Austria, you just have it as a solid, you know, onion. Um, and I think as well that uh, maybe the 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 color of the roof is wouldn't really be that typical in in Austria. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In Australia, you you have a lot of like wooden roofs or like slate, mm. something like that. Yeah. So I think we can move on. Um. And we're moving to Moravia, which, if you don't know, it's the eastern part of Czechia. Sort of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna show on the map later. Okay, so we are in Olomouc region. It's this, this is a region uh, called uh, Hana, which is like uh, this super fertile, uh, fertile uh, sort of land with uh, lots of like cultural heritage. Uh, yeah, but you can see uh, it looks like this sort of structure of the houses looks quite different from what we've seen before. Uh, you can see virtually every house here uh, is facing the road on the broad side. Uh, it's kind of far further apart from the roads. Uh, you can see like the, the driveways, and you can see we, we we don't have those walls with the with the barn doors in them. You, you have the barn doors like directly into the into the house or into the yard, uh, and this is very typical for like uh, southern and eastern Moravia, uh, or like southern and central Moravia, I should say. Yeah, it's like very broad houses interconnected to each other. Uh, with these huge barn doors leading directly into them. Uh, and you can also see uh, a lot of these are either two stories or they're sort of tall and they have like, like these little windows uh, on, on 
above the main story uh, or in either case it's just like very very dull they sort of uh, enlarged uh, because I, I think originally it was like for storage of hay and the end of on the first floor and later later like people made uh, regular floors up there the, the yeah. doors are really really interesting yeah uh that's quite specific to the region then right uh yes that is uh yeah, yeah that's pretty specific to moravia i think yeah, maybe okay. you can see that uh partially in like northern north eastern austria uh i'm not sh quite sure calamity have you ever seen something like that uh what what sort of door are you talking about uh just these sort of like huge bar doors like leading directly into the house Rarely, you kind of you might you might see it in very rural places, but in sort of bigger towns, I don't think I've seen them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the I feel like the sort of structure with these with the houses uh, facing the road on their broad side, as sort of uh, like interconnected to each other, is is common in northern Austria. Uh, but uh, yeah, these 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 barn doors definitely is a useful tip for Moravia. Mm. Uh, also, these little windows, uh, I'm going to talk about them a bit later in connection in, with Poland as well, but uh, yeah. We need a combination of these little windows with, with this kind of settlement structure uh, and these barn doors, that's southern or central Moravia. Also, again, I, I would like to point out the settlement structure. Like before, we saw that kind of chaotic uh, sort of spread of houses all over the road. Here, we see a slightly different approach, like you see you see the houses like are lined next to each other on the road side. The, the road is wider, and uh, it's actually it's actually a sort of linear. Like it more mostly follows the road, like with some uh, we have some side streets as, uh, as well. But yeah, uh, yeah, and you can see uh, on some of these houses also that's uh, like typical uh, light gray that I kind of talk about. Um, yeah, especially like over there. Uh, if you move a little bit to the south, like towards the church, um, you can again see uh, 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 on the church you can see that uh, typical yellow and white uh, color, color palette. And kind of close to that is like a um, yeah, it's a gray house in between an orange and a uh, red house. And that's, that is a typical uh, gray color. And that one also has has like the those those stripes that I kind of talked about with like a different color of gray, and also uh, if you look next to the windows, you can see the, the little like four tiling. Uh, this is this is actually paint on this one, but in a lot of houses, uh, especially in the like rural parts, uh, they can th th those can be like actual tiles, and they can be like uh, black or brown, especially like around sort of on the side of the windows. This is both Czechia and Slovakia. Uh, and also another tip is, is I think in, in general, I feel like Moravia tends to have like a lot more, uh, or well, maybe not a lot more, but more like these very brightly colored, colored houses, like that orange and red one. Uh, it's sort of the Austrian influence, I guess. Whereas uh, in Bohemia we have more more like the German influence and it's like a little more toned down. Uh, so yeah, uh, do you guys want to add anything here or maybe ask or uh, point something out? Uh, just because you said sort of the, the Austrian influence, like when I first looked at just the street as a whole, I did get uh, the sort of feeling that it looked kind of like um, something in, in far eastern Austria, uh, which I thought was interesting because, like, technically it should be farther away from Austria than, like, the western part of Czechia, I guess, but it looks more like it. Mm, I mean, this is, this one is actually closer, I think, or at least that's, yeah, the, the, the eastern part of Austria that you mean. Mm. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to look at. You know, yeah, I, I think I think it's like a. I think it's also like a difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys don't have uh, anything else to add, we we can move on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, and we were moving on to Eastern Moravia, which is like that bit by uh, Slovakia and Poland. Uh, we're in Nidek. Uh, it's like the Czech part of Silesia that, uh, that wasn't uh, transferred to Russia after, uh, after the Austrian-Prussian War. And uh, you can see uh, this is a this is a really tricky area because uh, you can see here a lot of features that I talk about later in connection with Slovakia and Poland. Uh, you can see the settlement structure is again completely different. You have these detached houses uh, sort of lining the road on both sides. Oh, thank you, Mav. Thank you, thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. We're sort of halfway yeah. through Czechia right now. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, King Maffer irritated me. Uh, oh, yeah, no. you can see. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can definitely see the structure. Like the the houses are a lot farther from the road. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, the houses are a lot farther apart from the road. They're disconnected. You can see any of those barn doors anywhere. Uh, it's like, in general, a lot more typical sort of Carpathian or Eastern European sort of settlement structure. Also, if you look, if you look east, you can see this uh, wooden church, which um, will pretty much only see in that like easternmost bit of Czechia, like by, right by Slovakia. Uh, they've been replaced long ago in in the rest of the country. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but still, if if we look at the houses, like you can still still see sometimes that uh, typical, uh, the typical grey that I talked about. Uh, however, on the other hand, you can still see a lot of metal roofs out here, uh, which I would like to talk about in connection with Slovakia. Uh, also, if you look if you look to the northwest sort of, you can see that two story uh, grey house. Um, but it's got a kind of low tent, tent style roof and that's something that, uh, that I will talk about in Poland so it's, it's, it's a pretty com confusing place so um, I feel like if yeah. Uh, yeah so I feel like this, this, this is like a real Turkey area in terms of uh, like actually distinguishing the countries but if you know you are in Czechia uh, it can be pretty helpful to know like what this uh, sort of area looks like that uh, if you have this sort of structure with like these detached houses strung around uh, on both sides of the road that it's likely to be like really far in the east so unfortunately I, I don't think I can offer much like specific advice I can uh, that I haven't talked about before but uh, if you if you use the camera gen if you if you use language if you use uh, other, other information and you want to narrow it down within the country, I feel like it could be somewhat useful. Uh, so, uh, do you guys want to add anything here? Like, wh wh where would you guess here, maybe? Let's uh, let's start. If you, if we got this on, on, like, a counter streak. I could end up in southern Poland for this, maybe. If, we, if we're talking about architecture... Like there's, oh, yeah. there's probably some, there are probably some clues. I don't know. Uh, GC, you're super quiet right now. Uh, maybe you switch to your mic, maybe. Oh, really? Oh uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, nope. uh, yeah, I can hear again. Yeah, I, I was, I was just saying I could end up in in maybe southern Poland here if there was no language or anything like that. Yeah, it's it's really hard to tell. It just looks like a lot of different sort of architectural styles came together here. Oh yeah, it's a it's a big mess, definitely. Um, yeah, I feel like in yeah, especially since like this region is like heavily culturally influenced by both Slovakia and Poland. Uh, there's actually a uh, like a couple of valleys away from here that's like purely Polish speaking, so or like a, or like a Polish derived dialect. Oh wow, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting part of the country. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys want to ask about anything here or point something out? 
Um, the dark house of the southwest is interesting. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna scooch over to that. Um, yeah, because I'll move towards it, but it looks like it's yeah, it's basically dark. yeah, yeah, it's it's super dark. Uh, and this, I feel like that's some that's like a feature of this area as well, like the uh, traditional architecture of the area. Uh, whereas, as we saw in mm -hmm. Bohemia, we had that sort of those uh, white horizontal stripes. Um, here in in like the east, the east of Moravia in South Asia, the traditional houses tend to be like dark, like log structures built out of the really out of these really dark logs. Uh, you don't you don't have those stripes okay. mostly, so it is definitely a feature mm -hmm. that you can uh, that, that you can see out here. Um, yeah, uh, and sort of in that southern or central Moravian bit, you basically won't see wooden houses at all. Uh, the traditional architecture out there is either based on stone or uh, brick. Question as well that's that's again slightly off track. If you were a foreign tourist visiting Czechia, which region would be the the nicest one to visit? Uh, I feel like this is a really hard question. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, it kind of depends on what you want to see. Like, if you if you like sightseeing, if you like hiking, if you like cycling, all of the above. <laughs> well, oh. I don't know. I I've always liked the look of like. You know the town of Karlov Ivari. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've always been that really nice, and I've always wanted to go there. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's actually kind of kind of trashy. I, I don't know, like it. I really? uh, it's like a. It big, might be a bit too. Um, it's too it's like touristy. a it's like a big target for Russian tourists. So. Oh uh, really? Uh, so so everywhere is covered in ads for like uh for like massages and uh, dental places and Cedar Lake and like clinics and stuff. No. Uh, yeah, maybe I have to pick. Yeah, it's a, and it's like the poorest part of the country. So, uh, like the the main promenade is 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 nice, more or less. But like you go one street beyond that, and it's gonna run down and everything. I think I feel okay. like if I like I had to pick like one area of the country to visit, I'd probably go to southern Bohemia uh, because like, like you have okay you have mountains, you have you have you have uh, lakes or ponds. You have great cycling. Yeah. You have great hiking. You have lots of pretty like real uh, villages and towns you have castles okay. and stuff it's like real pretty okay yeah um uh, anyway uh anything else else you want to add here guys no no, no. okay um yeah, uh, so let's, uh, let's then move on to uh, sort of the more urban parts, maybe the Panelak Apartments, <laughs> uh, which is the Czech word for uh, what Germans call Plattenbau. I think that's like the more commonly yeah, known Plattenbau. term in uh, in English. Uh, so it's like the most common part, kind of apartment that was built uh, sort of between the 60s and 80s. And it forms the outskirts of basically every every town uh, above like five thousand people. Um, and the really tricky part about these is uh, that obviously they were uh, built by the state, and the sort of uh, I don't know uh, blueprints for them were really really similar between between countries. So when you when you get a location like this, uh, I can't really think of anything specific that I could say to really distinguish these from Slovakian or uh, or Polish ones. They just look super similar everywhere. Um, I really, yeah, I just, I just really don't know uh, what what to point out. It's like a really unique feature here. Uh, like it, it's pretty. I like how we've got the Macedonian flag on the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that as well. Yeah. Oh wait, do we? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, an, an additional like... Macedonian flag, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think somebody is kind of bumping into the mic a little bit. Uh, every once in a while. Yeah, I think it's it's GC's. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but well, anyway, I guess 
Yeah, it's very easy to compare them to uh, to Germany, but obviously the most nobody really needs that uh, because it's Germany. Uh, it's a little bit easier to compare them to Hungary, as we'll see later. But especially compared to like Poland and especially Slovakia, I really don't have anything to offer. I'm, I'm afraid. I like um, yeah, the windows are basically basically identical. Or, like the window styles are basically identical between Poland, Slovakia, and Czechia. The balconies look very similar. Uh, the, even the color schemes, like uh, in Czechia and Poland, I feel like uh, the houses tend to be painted like these really bright colors. Whereas in Slovakia, especially in the east, a lot of them are still just just gray. But uh, that's obviously depends on case by case. So uh, yeah, I, I really don't know. Do you guys maybe have some some tips that you memorized uh, in, for like counter streaks? I wish I did. I don't really play country streaks. So yeah, 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 but uh, I mean, like in in general. Um, I I don't really know. Yeah, uh, these apartment blocks are very difficult to tell apart. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I would probably struggle myself to recognize, uh, to like really accurately recognize. Like one concrete thing I can say is that uh, Poland likes to paint uh, the name of the street uh, in the, uh, it's on on the, on the sort of narrow side of the of the building. So you have the, okay. so you have, so you have the name of the street in giant letters and the house uh, house number as well. Uh, that's not really a thing in Czechia or Slovakia. So even even if you're not sure about the language, it uh, it can help. Uh, you, can, you can also see that quite often in in Austria as well on apartment buildings like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah compared to say like Austria, um, I feel like uh, generally the the, the the apartment blocks in Austria tend to be smaller. Uh, they tend to have like a peaked roof, or they tend to like incorporate brick or something like that. Uh, it's sort of like very boxy uh, sort of apartments with like these really big windows, uh, more more like Czech, Slovak, Polish, Hungarian uh, kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know what to add here. Yeah, so uh, if you guys don't have anything to add, uh, I guess we'll move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I'm moving on to smaller panel-like apartments. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is a uh, this is just a tiny version of that uh, of that uh, basically the same style of building that I showed earlier. Uh, this one you see pretty commonly uh, in smaller towns. As for example, this Volinje, which is like eight thousand people maybe. Um, yeah, and they're usually built, built out of brick, uh, as opposed to, uh, like, paneling. Uh, one thing that I can point out is, uh, on the left of this building, uh, you can see that sort of stripe in between the windows that kind of uh, juts in. Uh, I feel like I don't really see that much mm -hmm. in uh, in Poland or Hungary. So I feel like that's, uh, that's a kind of... Uh, kind of, that's a kind of unique uh, element uh, that you can see in Czechia, maybe Slovakia as well, probably Slovakia as well, honestly, because it was it was one country. So, yeah, that's just something I wanted wanted to point out that uh, you'll see pretty commonly. Yeah. Uh. I don't really have, yeah, I can see that on those other buildings as well. Yeah, so, so that's basically all I want to say there. I'll just go down to this square. Uh, maybe if I can if I can think of anything else uh, to kind of point out. Uh, Wallingy has a beautiful uh, city hall. Uh, this is like a uh, peak re renaissance from like late 16th century. Um, also, this is like southwestern Bohemia, uh, so you can kind of see again like Austrian influences. Like a lot of these houses are, are very painted, very bright colors. 
Mm, but it's sort of situational. Yeah. So uh, I think I'll uh, I'm gonna move on. Get some mind. Mm. Um, yeah. And we are moving on to a suburb, which is like the yeah, which is this is like a typical sort of suburb or neighborhood around around a larger city. Like this is in Prague, but you can see a place like this uh, in a lot of uh, smaller cities as well. And uh, what is very common and is this like duplex uh, structure with these uh, with like two houses connected together, then like a strip of uh, either a strip of either gardens or like uh, or like uh, like these big doors to garages and stuff, and then again two houses and uh, and stop again two houses and stop. Um, it's like super super common uh, all over the country. I, I grew up in a neighborhood like this. Um, also, you can see again the the grays, uh, the preselected gray, are like all over here. Mm. Yeah, so there's definitely something I wanted to point out. Uh, I don't think I've seen it that kind of structure a lot in Poland or even Slovakia. So I feel like that's semi. Uh, not really unique, but it's it's like very very prevalent uh, in Czechia as opposed to the other countries. Yeah, but most most of the houses like this are actually one story. Um, um, oh, sorry. I really like the um, the Prague street signs, not just because they're helpful, but they just look really nice. Yeah, they they look really nice. There's another Radlitsa. Yeah, uh, kind of thinking of what else to point out here. Um, maybe if we move down the street a little bit to the west, uh, there's a there's sort of house, which is like a big grey cube. And I feel like this yeah. is something you'll see a lot in uh, like Czechia, Slovakia and Poland as well. Uh, although it usually has to, uh, tends to have a lot bigger windows and like a balcony. But uh, yeah, you, you see you see a cube kind of kind of like that a lot. I feel like um, yeah, this is like a, this is like an interwar neighborhood. This is like late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is another example of that of that kind of cube-like house. It's like functionalism, it's like late late thirties. Um. Yeah. Also, uh, maybe if we move down the street a little bit, uh, there's a there's a there's an apartment block which is like a, again interwar, and you can see um, it's like pretty common uh, in in inner cities in bigger cities. Uh, it tends to be and it tends to have these like triple divided windows and some like really simple ornaments. Uh, but but it tends to have a have a peaked roof, uh, so it's it's a lot different. It looks a lot different from the panel panel style apartments, and I feel like it's that's pretty common. And it's the you know, style you kind of see in like Austria, for example. So that can be can helpful I as well. Can I ask a question? Oh yeah, sure. About the trip. So with the triple divided windows, which which other countries in the area would you would you see those? Uh, all of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought so. I thought yeah, that's. I, I feel like it's. Um, I, I feel like somebody's either either hugging their mic or like eating something or, or something like that. I don't know if that's UGC or. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm using my headphones because I don't have access to my. Um, I'm using my internal mic in my headphones, so it might just be a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Subpar. Oh, don't, like, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Theater or something. <laughs> I, I can mute when I'm not speaking though. If it's a bit, if there's a bit of noise. Oh, yeah, I've, I've got push to talk on for this. I think okay. that's a good okay. idea in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's oh uh, yeah, it's it's no issue, but it's probably better. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, I feel like this style of window is like a staple of the entire like post-Soviet space. Like uh, it's super common in Czech, in Slovakia, in Hungary, in in Poland, in Croatia, in uh, even in the Baltics to some extent. Like you can see these in Western Europe sometimes. Like we, we saw those, we saw them in Belgium, 
uh, we saw them in Finland. Uh, you can see these in, for example, even in Italy or France sometimes. But they're like super common, virtually everywhere in uh, sort of the east of the former uh, Iron Curtain. I feel like um, so. Unfortunately, that can doesn't really help now not the country, but maybe the area. Yeah, and no, I thought so because we definitely saw them in a couple of the other streams. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, do you guys want to point out anything else here, or should we move on? Move on, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, last thing I want to point out, up, up, up on this house again, you, you can see the stripes around the, around the windows. Yeah. Okay, uh, next we have a typical suburb. Oh yeah, this is in uh, Portobitza. Yeah, this is again. This is sort of the yeah. This is again sort of the typical, like mid to big city suburb you'll see. Um, this is this post war I think, or, or maybe like started late thirties, uh, and then finished post war. Uh, and you can again see the uh, sort of duplex structure uh, of the houses, um, where you have the house, then you have you have some entrance to gardens, then you have the houses again. Uh, you can see a lot of, a lot of the typical light grey around here. Uh, yeah, especially uh, especially on these houses to the just to the west of us, uh, these grey cubes. I feel like it's very typical, especially the more east you go. These sort of grey cubes uh, with flat with a flat roof. Uh, you can see a lot of these in Poland as well. However, the color is slightly different. We're gonna see that uh, later on. Mm. So yeah, definitely the duplex structure is something I think it's worth remembering. Uh, that's super difficult in in Czechia and not that much in Slovakia and especially Poland. I feel like their the houses tend to be more freestanding. Um, yeah. Other than that, I kind of struggle to think of like uh, a really super distinguishing feature out here. Um, what about the? The red painted drains and the trim around the roof that we can see to the north. Uh, oh, to the start location. Yes, uh, I'll get back there. Uh, oops, sorry. Oh, sorry, my internet is uh, kind of breaking right now. Uh, sorry, uh, what exactly do you mean? Uh, no, I, I just thought it was interesting. So if you look to the north, you can see that a few of the houses have like a red painted trim around the roof oh, and yeah, the yeah. drains as well. I just it just stood out to me. I don't I don't know if there's anything to it, but just found it interesting that multiple houses have that. Uh, yeah, that might be like a that might be like a stylistic choice. I don't think that's like a typical feature that you'll see a lot. Yeah. They tend, yeah, to be, yeah. they tend to be painted, obviously, like below the below the roof, but um, mm -hmm. I don't think the red is very typical, unfortunately. That would be way too easy. They gotta they gotta make us work for those countries. Yeah, streets. they'd never make it that easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. Well, once again, like in terms of the roofs, you can see uh, most of the houses have to, have these like simple like peaked roofs. But you can also see some uh, if, we, if we go north or like northeast, you can see a lot of the a uh, lot of the clipped uh, clipped roofs as well that uh, that RC talked about. Notably, you can see that most houses don't have like these like uh, completely uh, completely sloping roofs. Like we we can see this pink house on the corner. Uh, that's something that uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, yeah, but most houses in Czechia have uh, have the simple simple peak or that's a little clip. So I think that's something to remember. Mm. Yeah, and, and and you can see basically every house here has the triple divided window, so unfortunately that's not very helpful. Yeah, uh, do you guys want to add anything on, or should we should we move on? I can move on, I think. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, these next two I'm gonna go through quickly because they're, they're not really useful. That's just something I kind of wanted to show off quickly. 
uh, this, these are architectural styles unique to Czechia. Uh, the first one is uh, is called Cubism. It's it's named after uh, art style from the twenties. And as I said, it's it's not useful because it's only like a dozen buildings around the country. But I just thought it was interesting because you can see that anywhere else in the world. Uh, this is the one on uh, the riverfront in Prague. And you can see it has a very like geometrical structure with all these wild shapes sort of jutting out from the uh, from the facade and kind of around the windows and stuff. And so it's very cool stuff. Yeah, kind of kind of just wanted to show that off. Yeah, this is not some. This isn't something you, you can't see anywhere else. So yeah, oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, the next one is called the Rondo Cubism, uh, and it's also unique to Czechia. Uh, this was also called the National Style. Uh, it was used on the, like broadly between the early twenties and the like early early thirties. And it, it's also like very, uh, very geometrical, but more rounded. You have lots of lots of the, uh, these arches, lots of rounded shapes, lots of uh, lots of uh, yeah, like really intricate geometrical details like this, and reliefs and statues and stuff. It's also it's, it's also really cool, honestly. Um, There's like the most famous example of Archa in Prague. Uh, so that's that's also something you you, you won't see uh, elsewhere in uh, in Europe. Uh, it was relatively common for like public buildings, like like schools and uh, post offices and stuff, although in like a simplified form. Yeah, but it's also not super useful because they are not that common. I, I kind of just wanted to mention that as well. So yeah. Mm, and moving on. Uh, yeah, kind of just wanted to show show that off again. Uh, this is on the Narodny Street in Prague. Uh, this is the this is a good example of the Czech style of Jugendstil, uh, or Setsesa as it's called uh, in Czechia. Um, and I think it's called. Uh, what is it called in in in, in English? Uh, Novo. Oh, I don't, I don't know. It's something something from French. But either way, you can it's, see it's art. It's art nouveau. Art Nouveau, okay, okay, yeah. I don't think it really ever reached uh, like sort of the Anglo sphere, so that's more of a yeah, more of a French and uh, German spheres of influence. Yeah, but you can see a lot. Of, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of like this a uh, lot of ironwork, a lot, a lot of like a really really intricate, uh, really intricate, colorful sort of decorations all around. Um, uh yeah you have a lot of paintings a lot of really intricate art and work as well um yeah it's the houses in this style tend to be that they have like a lot of a lot of like a really interesting like sort of organic shape shapes to them you can see the the sort of waves and and arches on top uh and that's something you'll, you'll see relatively commonly in Czechia as well so that's also something i wanted to kind of help define uh, Calamity, uh, I think you should be pretty familiar with this one from Vienna. Mm. It, it looks like a, a similar kind of style, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Viennese style is a little bit different from what was used in Czechia, but I, uh, I don't really know the particular intricacies of that, so... Yeah. Mm, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we can move on from that, and the last one, which is kind of a regional tip. Uh, this is a town square in Moravia, this is Kromě Říš. And uh, you can see uh, these houses uh, are, first of all, really col colorful. Uh, most of them are painted like real wild colors, so like white and uh, a really bright color. You can see the uh, sort of porticos going all around the square. And you can also see that uh, they're all facing the uh, facing the uh, the square on their sort of broad side, and they have, to, they have this like a really high wall up front. It's either completely hiding the roof line behind, or like at least attempting to conceal it. And this kind of like architecture is 
we didn't check yeah, unique to to Moravia. You won't really see that in Czechia uh, or, or like in Bohemia. In Bohemia, you usually have like uh, beaks facing the square and stuff like that. This is the kind of look that's like typical to to central Moravia. And also, if you look if you look to the south, you can see that yellow and red house uh, with the stripes and with the win windows to again support what I what I talked about. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to point out. This is this is mostly useful if you know you are in Czechia because uh, this kind of look uh, you can see in Poland as well, uh, as we're gonna see. So yeah, uh, I think that was it uh, for me in Czechia. Do you guys want to add anything or ask or whatever? Not really. I just thought it was really interesting that how when I looked at this particular uh, location the first time, I thought it looked really similar. So I don't know if you remember that one location we had in Upper Austria on the oh, yeah, yeah. Square as well. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, as I said, this is more important, more like useful within within Czechia. But yeah, but but you you can use that to sort of narrow it down in the region as well. Like when you have these colorful houses uh, with like the, with the, the really tall front wall, yeah. So it's it's probably like Upper Austria. It's like this eastern part of Czechia, or it's like southwestern Poland, probably. Hmm. So yeah, uh, that was Czechia. Uh, so I hope you guys kind of learned at least a few few things uh, you didn't know before. And I think we can move on to Slovakia. Maybe yeah, some I definitely learned a lot. Oh, very cool. Maybe some final thoughts. Uh, like, do, do you struggle with Czechia, typically? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Czechia's always been somewhere where I kind of struggle because it's like such a combination of architecture. It's like not something extremely distinct. It's like more like an yeah. eclectic feel. Yeah. Yeah, 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 this whole Central European area is just really difficult, even for me, because it's like, it, it used to be all the same country, and it was such a drastic clusterfuck of, uh, of nationalities and ethnicities that it's just all mixed together, and it's really, and obviously those styles didn't respect modern borders, so it's all really mm. mixed together. I bet yeah. Granis is about to join chat as we go to Slovakia. <laughs> Yeah, so we are moving into Slovakia, the eastern neighbor. Uh, and we are going to start off in a typical western Slovak village, which is uh, which is going to be relatively close to the border of, uh, of Czechia in Trenčín. Um, and you can say uh, it's, not a, it's not very different out here. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I feel like it's relatively... Uh, it's kind of a combination between that... Uh, I feel like it's uh, it's a relative combination of the, of the styles we saw from Czechia. You can see uh, the houses are relatively close to the road and kind of have a little really strewn uh, around. However, they are also uh, kind of separated, which is difficult for Slovakia, uh, where they're where they're kind of where kind of all the houses are detached. And you can also see that uh, they're sort of all kind of following the road. Uh, so they have kind of that uh, linear structure, and also I wanted to point, point out here is the prevalence of metal roofs out here. You can see on that uh, on the building to the north, on the, on the one to the uh, to the west, uh, and to the one to the south. Uh, there's just a lot of them around. Uh, you can see uh, metal roofs in in Czechia and in Poland to some extent, especially like close to the to the Carpathian region, which can be really tricky. Um, but I feel like they're really, really common in, in Slovakia. They're like the most common by far out of all of those countries. Uh, also, if you, uh, if you look to the north, you can see that uh, sort of grey roof. Uh, oh, actually, actually, there's a better example to the south. If you look to the south, uh, on the, to that house on, on the south uh, east, you can see that uh, sort of grey roof with like a diamond pattern. Uh, that's a that's a roof style that's very common in both Czechia and Slovakia, uh, but especially in Slovakia, and you can see that in Hungary as well. So, uh, however, I don't think I've seen the, I've seen that outside uh, of of those three countries. 
So that's maybe a good tip. Uh, yeah, this this gray with a with a uh, diamond pattern. Uh, so yeah, I think out here my biggest pointers would be uh, definitely the roofs, the metal and the diamond shaped roofs, and sort of this structure with like the detached houses. Um, also, you can see some of the stuff that I've talked about in Czechia because again it used to be the same country. You can see the gray, the, the, the light gray, the diesel it. Uh, and on the house to the sort of southwest, you can see the color of, color of a strip once again. And also, uh, yeah, oh no, no, wait, no, oh, sorry. Also, out here, uh, here out west, you can also see a lot of the roofs are, are still like these high peaks, uh, or maybe like clipped. Uh, however, as we move east, um, uh, yeah, uh, maybe if you move a little bit to the south, you can see these two houses, which have these, uh, which are facing the road and have this sloping roof at the front. Uh, this is going to be the, the standard as uh, as you go as you go east. We're going to see that in a little bit, uh, and that's I feel like distinguishes it a lot from Czechia because uh, these kind of roofs are relatively uncommon in, in Czechia. Like you'll see them sometimes. But they're definitely like not uh, not uh, the majority of houses in a village that you see. So yeah. Uh, do you guys want to add something here, or uh, yeah, want to maybe put something out? So from at the start point, there's a blue roof to the north. Oh uh, yes. Um, Is quite, is that quite unusual or not? So uh, much? yes, actually, uh, that is quite quite unusual. I don't, I don't think it, like I don't, I don't know how it is in in Slovakia, but at Czechia, I think I think most places wouldn't even let you put a blue roof on your house because it's it would yeah, be against the municipal codes. Yeah, I was thinking I'd be surprised to see that in Czechia, but I was wondering if it was common in Slovakia or not. Maybe not. Yeah, no, they really don't that common. Maybe some somewhere. I, I feel like the far yeah. east in Europe you go, the more colorful the roofs, the roofs become. I feel like you, you mm -hmm. see a lot of blue roofs in Russia, for example. Yeah, it's yeah. Sometimes in Poland as well, but in, in Slovakia it's just an occasional blip. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, so if you guys have nothing to add, uh, I think we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, you can see the, the sort of uh, onion-shaped roof over there as well. Yeah, again, this whole region is just very confusing. Actually, I, I was thinking that if we end like within some reasonable time frame, we can, uh, or maybe if you guys would will, will be tired, we probably will be. But maybe I individually can uh, play the better Europe, uh, Central Europe map and kind of try to pick out uh, the locations and. What's uh what's different around them and stuff. So yeah. Is 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 that map on uh in your kind of divisions? Is you know in the upper divisions in Ed's non-moving league as well? This week? Uh, I, no, I, I don't think so. This week. I, I, I don't yeah. think so. All right. Unfortunately. So the the stream came like two days too late. It's already. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. No problem. So we are moving on to a typical southern Slovak village, and here's where it starts getting confusing. Uh, so uh, you can see the structure is a lot different. You can see uh, we have a linear sort of structure of the settlement we, with these houses sort of lined uh, along the, alongside the road, uh, like facing the yeah facing the road on their on narrow sides. Uh, this is kind of the Hungarian sort of cultural sphere. You can see that a lot in Romania, uh, as we'll see later on, hopefully. Yes, yeah, as, uh, as Radok says, this is very much looking like Hungary, and that's because, uh, dare I say, this part of Slovakia basically is Hungary. It's, uh, it has a pretty substantial Hungarian minority, it's even a major majority in, in some places. Uh, it was influenced culturally by Hungary for centuries, so the differences in like layout and architecture are basically like really minuscule, 
and that's what makes it so difficult like i was i was looking for villages like down here in slovakia and in northern hungary and i just couldn't really see much to sort of differentiate those two uh, so out here maybe what i would uh oh yeah and I, I should also definitely mention that uh you can see virtually every house out here has that sloping roof uh, at the front uh and that's something you can you can use to identify the like hungarian sort of cultural sphere because it's like very typical for that so it's hungary slovakia uh sort of transylvania and part of uh part of romania uh so and yeah whereas in czechia this would be a little, most most of, of these houses would like a would have a normal normal peak and some would be facing the road on the road side and stuff so yeah, but anyway, uh, if we were to talk about how to use how to differentiate this from uh, Hungary, um, well, first of all, I would, I would say if you look at the house to the north, uh, you can see those tiles that I kind of talked about. Um, yeah, are, are around the windows. I don't think I've seen those around in like Hungary proper. It, they might be somewhere, but I feel like it's a lot more common in Czechia as like a or like former Czechoslovakia, as I, I should say, as like a stylistic choice. Also, I feel like a lot of these houses are missing those typical uh, like window uh, window shades. Uh, I don't know how you how you call that. Uh, Rollet uh, sh shades. Yeah, but uh, and basically those things you, you kind of put over the, win the windows to uh, to stop the sun. I feel like shutters. Sh shutters, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, not, not uh, yeah. It's like yeah. It's these basically these things, <laughs> the, the things you pull down uh, from from the top uh, over the windows. Uh, I feel like that almost every house in Hungary has them, whereas out here in Slovakia. Um, a lot of houses are missing them. Uh, they, they still have them a little, on a lot of them, but I feel a, a, like a, like a lot more than uh, in Hungary uh, are missing them. Uh, apart from that, I honestly am kind of clueless as as for some like uh, non-meta specific clues how to tell this part from uh, from Hungary. It would have to come down to the vibes for me, I guess, and I would definitely look for polls and weather meta and stuff. Uh, I'm ashamed to admit it, but this is this is like a, probably one of the trickiest regions of Europe in terms of uh, architecture, since again it was it, it was all one country and the, the trends kind of just passed over the borders. So maybe what what would you guys do here? Uh, what would you guess? I was I was just looking uh, through some of the Hungarian locations as well, and I noticed that uh, on the two I checked just now, uh, none of those had house numbers on them, and mm. and this uh, village does. So I don't know if that's something that's particular or if that's just coincidence. Oh yeah, it's, um, I never really thought about it, but it might be true because uh, I don't think I've seen even the house numbers on the map in Hungary, so. Yeah, yeah, that might be a bad thing. That's that, that's helpful. I never never noticed that. That's that's true. I'm pretty sure Debra is not around, so he can confirm or deny. But uh, yeah, we're gonna work under the assumption, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you guys got this on on uh, on Geogas, would you guess in Hungary or Slovakia? Um, it's like summer coverage, so I think I would lean uh, Slovakia. I mean, Hungary does have some summer coverage, but not quite as much, and it kind of looks different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. The, the season would probably save yeah. me a bit, but. If if meta didn't exist, I could be way off with this one. I think. Yeah, yeah. Also the polls, obviously. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's a region where you can kind of as much as I uh, as I advocate uh, architecture based guessing uh, everywhere I can. Uh, this is kind of a region where you can sort of function well without meta clues. I feel like. Uh, and it's just very tricky. 
So, uh, if you guys have nothing else to add here, I think we can move on. Mm -hmm. To Eastern Slovakia. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, here, here you can see that weather meta that uh, Ryder talked about. Just a very early spring, you can see the, the trees are starting to bloom. Uh, yeah, but anyway, if you look at the houses, uh, you can see the sort of structure that I talked about. Like, the houses are detached, they are uh, stacked alongside the road, uh, one uh, one next to another, with nothing behind them. Uh, there's like, a, uh, like in the Carpathian Mountains, you see like perfect, uh, perfectly linear villages where just one house stacked next to another alongside the road for miles and miles. Uh, it looks really cool from the, from the top and it's really uh, it's really a pain in the ass to deal with when you're looking for like rural locations to add to your maps. Uh, so I kind of uh, kind of have a distaste personal personal distaste for those areas. But, uh, but anyway, uh, what to look for here are definitely first of all these metal roofs. Uh, you can see a lot of these, especially these like unpainted metal roofs. Basically, yeah, almost every house here has, has a metal roof, which I feel like it's very, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a very common feature in, in the eastern parts of Slovakia. Also, you can again see the diamond chip pattern. Uh, and this combination of the metal roofs with this diamond with this diamond pattern, I feel like should point you to specifically to Slovakia here, actually, because like in Hungary, uh, you wouldn't see the metal roofs, or at least not as nearly as many of them. And in Poland, you wouldn't see that uh, diamond pattern. And if you look at the houses themselves, a lot of them have this uh, you have sort of this lip in the front uh, where it sort of slopes down, and then it ends in a in a normal peak. And I feel like that's very typical for this like northern Carpathian region. Uh, you can see that uh, definitely in Slovakia, very commonly, uh, to some extent in, in uh, like very southern Poland as well, in the Carpathian region. Uh, you can see that uh, on some like really old houses in far eastern Czechia as well. But uh, yeah, that's definitely the northern Carpathian region. Mm. I feel like I can sometimes guess eastern Slovakia because it's I, I think it's quite poor compared to the rest of Czechia and Slovakia. Uh, oh that, yeah, it is. Is that it right? Is. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely kind of neglect the area in general. Yeah. You can see a lot of these houses are burning wood or coal. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you can also see, uh, yeah, in, in, in some, yeah, you can also see a lot of the, the grey that I talked about. Uh, yeah, but especially like, like the most most important things of, uh, out here, I feel, are, are definitely the roofs, the metal roofs, the diamond shape pattern, and this this like pretty sizable lip in front of the house that I think should point you to the northern Carpathians, and in combination with the with roofs out here, it should point you to Slovakia. Uh, have, have you guys noticed the metal roofs before? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you did. I, I haven't actually, but uh, similarly to, to how it was overhangs in Switzerland, I think if there's one thing I'm going to take from this stream, it's going to be the, the metal roofs of Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely a good, good thing to remember, I feel like. Because it, it, it is like really common out here, especially in the east, the, like the further east you go. And as I said, you, you can see metal roofs uh, in the like surrounding countries in Czech and Poland, especially as you get closer to Carpath Carpathians. It's just a really baited region, I can't do anything about that. But yeah, I, I, it's definitely the most prevalent out here. And you can see them a lot in Romania as well, I feel, I feel like. Uh, is that right, Radu? Um, can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, it, 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 that you can see quite a lot of uh, metal roofs in Romania as well. Yeah, um, they're mostly in Moldova, um, sometimes in Wallachia, um, but... I would say like in the mountainous areas, it's usually like the Hungarian style, except maybe like in the far north, like Bukovina, maybe there you would see metal roofs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, yeah. So if you're like within this region, Slovakia is a safe bet. You have a lot of them around. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can move on if you guys don't have anything to add. Uh, what what did you guys hear last? 
Um, I don't think we heard anything about this location. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so I'll start over. So, uh, just sort of a redirect of what I talked about before, but you can see we are once again in the spring. Kind of things are blooming all around. And you can see just how many metal roofs that there are, especially the unpainted, bright unpa unpainted ones. I feel like those are especially common in the more eastern eastern Slovakia you go. Uh, you can see the house the, the house orientations is just once again alongside the, alongside the road, uh, facing the road on their narrow side. You can see most of these houses, uh, the roof sort of slopes uh, right back, uh, like in accordance with the sort of uh, hung Hungarian style, but you can see a lot of uh, houses with that chip as well, which is more like, um, yeah, which is more like a typical mountain style. You can see it a lo lot in uh, Poland as well. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of, it's kind of the crux of what I wanted to show here, like, uh, like if more examples of those metal roofs and those, those roof slopes. Oh, I think GC is gone. Grab, grab, Rafe. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just wanted to, to mention uh, how there's like a lot of different, I don't want to say styles, but uh, kinds of, of, you know, painted houses here. Like you've got a lot that aren't just one solid color is what I'm basically trying to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true. Uh, like, uh, like here out east, uh, a lot of people like build or renovate their houses basically by by themselves, and the villages don't necessarily have very strict municipal codes, so you can basically do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, so you want to paint your house like this bright toxic green, like no matter, you can just do that. And since you'll, you'll probably do, be doing it yourself, you probably won't do a very good job. So next next spring you'll take a slightly different color because the store ran out of the original, and you'll uh, you also have repair the uh, repair the blotches and so on and on and on. So yeah, the houses can be a little bit of a mess. But yeah, definitely, there's a lot, definitely a lot of different colors. But you can still see a lot, lot of that original gray that I kind of talk about. And you can also see the stripes around the windows as well. Uh, that I talked about originally as well. Oh, uh, if we move down a little bit to the south, um, you can see. Again, those those lips on the on the front of the house, um, on this one and uh, on this one as well. Yeah, that's once again that's like, that's like a mark of the Carpathian architecture. Well, well, basically every house out here has a metal roof. I didn't even I didn't expect that to be that extreme. Wow. Yeah, you can see that you can see those diamond patterns sometimes as well. When while well, we're talking about uh, Slovakia specific clues, it's an architecture. But if you see an ad for Sharish beer uh, out here, uh, that's also Slovakia. I think that's, that's by far the most popular beer in like Eastern Slovakia, and you, you'll see ads for it pretty commonly in the West as well. So yeah, that's just a hint. Yeah, uh, if you guys were dropped here, would you would you go Slovakia? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, this yeah this is sort of pretty close to the typical look that you get. Oh, sorry, Kalmati. I I just wanted to say for kind of all of these questions of would I go here if I were in this place on GeoGuessr. I'm kind of always not really sure because I know where it is that influences what I think I might go for. So like most of the time I don't really have a clear answer. I don't know what I would do if I were in GeoGuessr on this location. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so, sorry about that. I, uh, it's just more about like whether this sort of uh, the sort of yeah, whether this is something like you would you would use typically if you were playing by yourself, or maybe maybe something like. I I, sh I should expand upon or that, that I forgot about, so that's kind of the reason why I'm always asking that. Mm. I kind of most mostly guess based based on the feeling the location gives me. It's oh, not yeah, yeah. a hundred percent fail safe strategy, um, but yeah. So for me, it's always hard to say. I would definitely guess this place. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm a big supporter of uh, vibe guessing, so it's completely understandable. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think GC should be back soon, but I'm. I think I'm gonna move on to the next. Yeah, I, 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 I am here. I'm here, but you can move on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I think we'll move on, and we are gonna move on to the cities. Uh, yeah, this is in Koshice. And uh, yeah, uh, you can see the Koshitsa Cathedral out there, really gorgeous. Um, and this is another one I really struggled with because um, again, it's it's like former Austria-Hungary, and there's a lot, a lot of things that were really separate this from Czech in my mind. Uh, this kind of structure with like uh, with like one-story houses like lining both sides of the uh, of the road, uh, even in like a, like a really large city, I feel like that's something that would push me more towards Hungary uh, and Slovakia. But that's obviously just an yeah, just a vague vibe that you know, like you guys were talking about. I feel like the one thing out here that I would use to distinguish from Czechia. Would be these uh, like cast iron uh, balconies on, on on some of these houses. Uh, you can see uh, quite a lot of them around, and this is something you really see a lot in this uh, on these kinds of streets in Czechia. I feel like it's more of a yeah Hungarian or Polish thing. So that's probably like the most obvious thing I would use out here if I didn't know if I didn't have language or some other clues. Hmm. Like if you were, if you guys were like ignoring like obviously language and, and other stuff, uh, what would you use here to kind of did use that sure in Slovakia? I I probably end up going Czech here to be honest. I don't. Yeah, yeah. This this one is tricky for sure. Like yeah, the, the general look of the buildings. This is like all all, uh, all the ornamentation and stuff. This is all things you can see in Czechia. Even the even the general like structure of the one tall uh, one tall houses. As I, as I said, it's more like smaller cities, but uh, yeah, it's obviously yeah. varies a lot by uh, case by case basis. So I definitely wanted to mention the balconies. These kind of cast iron balconies as something that you are more commonly uh, see in like Slovakia, Hungary, or um or Poland. So if you have like a language that you're not sure it's uh Czech or Slovak and you can see these balconies, I would personally definitely lean uh more towards Slovakia in that case. So yeah, that's yeah that's what I wanted to point out here. Uh, anything else uh, catching your uh, eyes here? No really I, when i first when i first looked at the location um there's probably a lot of stuff indicating that it's not but it actually out of all the locations we've had so far in slovakia i think it reminded me the most of austria there's a street in in st Polten that looks pretty much just like this uh if you look to the west sort of um but yeah you've obviously got the language here <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah, I think I think it tracks. I, th I think uh, this is Koshice. Uh, I think it had a pretty substantial German minority, so uh, it kind of makes sense that the styles would overlap. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like in I feel like in Austria, uh, the houses would generally be in a slightly better repair and like painted slightly brighter colors, and I feel like the windows would be slightly different. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, for example, I can see like virtually every building out here has these like triple divided windows. I feel like in Austria there would be a lot more variation in, in window styles. I can try and see if I don't think it is, but I can try and see if I can find what I mean on Google Street View. But I'm not sure if that particular street is covered. Okay, that'd be cool. Yeah, so. Unfortunately, there's another case where you'll have to kind of look for a language or some other meta clues uh, rather than rely on the architecture because it's just very tricky. Like if I saw this, I would um, I'd probably recognize this as like either Czechia, Slovakia, uh, Hungary or weirdly Romania because like it's the kind of 
Hungarian civic architecture, I guess. It's kind of like this. It kind of has this like vibe that I, that I can't really properly describe, but uh, you guys probably know what I mean. So, yeah. Um, so if you guys don't have anything else to add here, uh, I think move on. Mm. There was a fire here. Huh. Um, yeah. And we are gonna move on to, uh, oh yeah, that's just something I wanted to point out. This is not uh, really a particular representative location, but uh, it is like a modern church, like early 2000s, late 90s. And it's something that's kind of distinctive, uh, distinctive in Slovakia uh, in comparison to Czechia. Uh, because uh, Slovakia is actually quite uh, like highly religious, especially the more east you go, uh, compared to Czechia. And you see quite a lot of these like very modern churches out in like villages and suburbs and stuff. Uh, since obviously a lot, of, most of them were built like in the last thirty years. Uh, whereas in Czechia, you're very unlikely to come across a modern church or like one built in the last I don't know seventy years. It's mostly those those little barrack ones that we saw. So yeah, that's just something uh, that I kind of wanted to point out. Uh, you'll you'll also see a lot of modern churches in. In Poland, in Hungary, and in uh, Croatia. But if you have like a mountainous area uh, with like a kind of ambiguous architecture, and you have, you have a Czech or Slovak language, and you see a modern church, it's pretty likely to be Slovakia. So yeah, that's definitely something I wanted to point out. You can also see uh, some Slovakian uh, Panelag buildings. They're essentially identical to the Czech ones. I really can't see any big differences in the styles, but you can see out here there, some of them are actually unpainted, they're just uh, straight uh, straight grey. And it's slightly more common in Slovakia than in Czechia, but obviously, yeah, it, it's case by case, so it's not that helpful. Mm. Yeah, and anything else you, would, uh, you guys would point out here? Or maybe ask, or something like that? Uh, just maybe a general architecture question, because you you showed that sort of modern church. Um, it sort of reminded me of Iceland a bit. Uh, that also I think has quite a lot of these sort of modern churches. Uh, are, is are there like more countries where you say it's it's more common to see a lot of modern churches compared to you know the older traditional ones? Uh, well, as I said, mostly the sort of like really religious Eastern European space, so Slovakia, Poland, especially Poland, there's tons of modern churches in especially southern and eastern Poland. Uh, so Slovakia, there's some in Hungary, uh, you can see some in Croatia as well. Uh, not really in the Baltics, I think, those are pretty effaced. Uh, yeah, Iceland sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I can see that. I. I... I feel like you could see similar churches to this in Iceland. I can picture it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I feel like in, in sort of in the, like the Mediterranean or France, sometimes, especially in the suburbs, I feel like you, you run into modern churches or like occasionally in some villages, but especially like modern suburbs. Outside of that, not really. Okay. I feel like in, in most of like Western Europe, uh, religiosity has been going down a lot, uh, so there was no, yeah. re no real need for more churches. And like mm. in Czechia, in in the Baltics, in Scandinavia, uh, they're just really atheist, so it makes no not real no real sense to build more churches uh, either. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think we can move on here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have another church. This is in the south once again. It's in the or, or like center. Uh, it's in the Nitra, Nitra region. And you can see it's uh, it's a similar color, color palette to the uh, Czech one with the white and yellow. But you can see see the roof. Uh, it's a it ends in a normal peak, and it has those uh, it has it, it has those white circles. Uh, usually it's, uh, so sometimes you see a clock up there, sometimes not, uh, but, but this, yeah, but it's a very typical, like, village church tower for 
like Slovakia and to some extent Hungary as well, with this like normal tall spire and like this uh, this clock or, or just a circle in their really big window. So uh, you you don't really see that uh, typical onion shaped roof uh, we saw in Czechia that much outside of that like westernmost area. But there's, there are some obviously like. None of this I talk about is like super absolute, but yeah, and if you look at the houses, you can also see the repeat of what we talked about. Uh, they are all all separated, uh, facing, facing the road, you can, uh, sloping roofs, and you can see the diamond shaped pattern. So yeah, and you can see the, yeah, those things, <laughs> the, the sun shades. Uh, on some houses and not really on others, whereas in Hungary, uh, I feel like virtually every building would have would have those. So I feel like that's something that can be used to some extent. So yeah. Uh, anything else you would like to point out here, guys? Nope. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see you can see there's not not. not there's not much uh, metal roofs down here because we have a lot more Hungarian influence, which is more like terracotta roofs. Yeah, the metal roofs are more in the mountains, definitely. Especially in the east. And we are going to end with a typical suburb. So this is in Nova Zamki, this is that's in Nitra region as well, which is sort of this similar, era, similar area. And uh, you can see in comparison to Czechia, uh, the the structure you, you can you can sort of see that the houses are like more separated. Uh, they they're, they have like uh, they're not really like duplexes. They they have like um, the doors in between them. Otherwise, that uh, they they are all facing the road on their broad side, which is a change from the um, which is a change from uh, change from Czechia to some extent. Especially in Hungary, because I feel like in Hungary, a lot of these like city suburbs, uh, the houses are still facing the road on their like narrow side, but it, it can be kind of interchangeable. So I kind of struggle to make that a rule. Uh, yeah, you can also see a lot of these uh, sunshades, which you would also see in Hungary, uh, but it's not every single house. So uh, yeah, that can be kind of useful. And you can also see the stripes in between the windows. Uh, I feel like that can be kind of useful to use that to distinguish. Uh, we can we're gonna see that you can see uh, sort of color uh, color variations like that uh, in Hungary as well. But I feel like just this straightforward stripes in between windows are more of a Slovak thing. So hmm, well, like like okay, so like in comparison to Czechia. Uh, I think the main standout here are the sun shades. Uh, those are not really common in Czechia. Uh, also the roofs that are like sloping back. Mm. Yeah, and kind of kind of the structure to some extent as well. Like uh, a suburb like this would have more duplexes, I feel like, or the houses would be like closer together. But obviously it depends on the location, exact. Uh, and from Hungary. Well, there's the, there's the house numbers, as Calamity pointed out. Uh, there's the fact that not every single house has the has the sun shades. Uh, other than that... Oh, oh yeah, and the stripes and with the windows, that can be kind of a clue as well. Other than that, I really struggle to think of anything particular here. Like, if, if you got this location on Chiga, sir, would you, would you go... What what, what what hints would you would you would you use here? I'd get confused by the painted stripes and go trickier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it would be tough. On honestly, I'd I'd be hoping for the best. Yeah, same. Yeah, yes, yeah, same honestly. Like, if I get this location, I, I think vibes would kind of make me go Slovakia, at least I hope. But I would kind of struggle really yeah. to kind of differentiate this from Hungary. 
as I said, it's like like a very very tricky uh, tricky region. So there's one of them's number I'm plates again. Oh yeah. Notice again the drain is like to the west, painted the same color as the window frame. That's like a. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I've noticed that's... it on a couple of locations. It's... There might be something there. I don't know. Yeah, that might be something that's I've I just never noticed, but I, but I think it's a yeah. thing in Hungary as well. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, can, probably because it, it. Yeah, no, it was in it was in Czechia, it was in Slovakia, so it's probably like more broad than just specific to one country. Yeah. 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 So unfortunately, no no real big helpful advice from me here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's more like the absence of sun shades of some houses, the stripes between the windows, and uh, we have the numbered plates. That's kind of a yeah. So, uh, that was Slovakia. Any, any any final closing thoughts on Slovakia? That's a no then. Oh, difficult, okay. but hopefully, yeah. difficult, but hopefully a tiny bit easier now. Yeah. Like it's 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 too easy to think things look Czech or Hungarian rather than being like inherently Slovakian. Like I feel like it often yeah. gets you often you think you think it looks Czech or Hungarian before you think it looks Slovakian. Like there's no like yeah, unique feature. Yeah. Slovakia was always one of those countries where I'd never really think, oh, this looks Slovakian. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it looks like something else and then get it wrong. Yeah. 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 Or yeah, use some other clue to give, give yourself yeah. a bit of context. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we'll move on to uh, Hungary. Uh, 